the first book of the Bible, book of Genesis, the beginning of all, all things, chapter 25. Let's meditate. Genesis 25. Genesis 25. Genesis 25. We're going to read only verse number 11. Amen. The Bible says the following. And it came to pass after the death of Abraham that God blessed his son Isaac. And Isaac dwelled at Beer Lehi Roy. Let us read all together. And it came to pass at the death of Abraham that God blessed his son Isaac, and Isaac dwelled at Beer Lehi Roy. Let us close our eyes. Lord Father, your word has been read. And because we read, we already feel your presence. We take possession, Lord, of a promise that you have given us as we were praying for the service before the service began. Operate, Lord, clear our minds, bring to our memory the eternity. Speak to us, Lord, about your purpose to each one that entered here in the house tonight. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Some uh, versions say like Roy and other say be like Roy. This expression means that the well of the, the one that can hear and see. Actually, the one who lives and sees. Who can be the well of the one who sees and is alive? It's this is the one, Jesus. This one we serve is the God that died but is now risen from the dead and now he promised to uh, take us um, to heaven to be with him. This is the name of the church, Maranat, at the door. Our service, our church. It's a very simple church. You that visit us may be blessed and don't pay attention to the simplicity because what is the most important to be seen here is invisible to men's eyes, which is the person of the Lord Jesus. And the person of the Lord Jesus can be seen in the Old Testament in different ways. It's an allegory and a symbol. And here's a wonderful way for the Lord to present himself in the Old Testament. We are here reading the passage that speaks of the passing of Abraham, man called the father of faith, and in him we can mirror ourselves, a man that heard the voice of the Lord and didn't question, received an order from the Lord and didn't negotiate, he received an instruction from the Lord, but never doubt, had doubted in his heart. He followed the instruction that God had given him. And my brother and my sister, the Bible says that he was greatly blessed. Here's the example for you and I. The Lord has spoken to you. Has the Lord shown you a direction? Has God given you a direction? Don't look to the sides. Don't question. Don't negotiate. But hear the voice of the Spirit. Because when you hear the voice of the Lord, we will see fulfilled in our lives everything that he has promised and uh, we'll, we never lacked anything and we we'll never lack anything there's no other reason for us to be here if you d disagree with this amen but there's no other reason for us to be here other than to come and tell the lord how grateful i am for all your benefits uh, upon my life beside the job and cures and uh, a family the, the 
beside everything, salvation and assurance of an eternal life with the Lord. We can say that in any moment of our walk spiritually, if the Lord had not cured us anymore, if the Lord had not opened any do door for us anymore, if the Lord had not given any gift, not even a miracle, even a small or um, a house, it's a minuscule something or something that the world could have said uh, famous. If the Lord had not given us anything, but if He had the assurance of eternal life, the assurance that our name is written in the Book of Life, that would be enough for us. We would not need cure, jobs, or anything else. And glory to God, because we understand this. The jobs, the doors, the balance, the adjustment, the family being blessed, being watered and from the dough that came from heaven. It all comes as a consequence of salvation that Abraham understood. And because of this, he never questioned any uh, direction or lesson the Lord had given him. And he relayed this information. And now this message is applicable to the family. Because today is the subject of the month that we are, have been praying for. We have been praying for the families. And the lists are large. Mine is huge. If I had to bring here, I had to uh, rent a truck because it's huge. Because our families need a lot of things. The ones there, are many they are distant, they, they have not surrendered to the Lord. How many things we need? How many things you and I could say, Lord, I need this, this, this. We would put in alphabetical order, in chronological order, the order in which we wanted to receive those blessings. But the Lord knows all those things. The, he wants to want. He only wants to hear from our lips, Lord. Yes, I want. Isn't it how the Lord wanted? You want to be saved. You want to be cured. Of course, we want. But He wants to hear from us because this is a sign of dependency. Is to recognize that we don't have anything and we are nothing if we don't have the Lord. But with Him, we we do wonders. With Him, we are more than victorious. Isaac was reasoned like this, and we have to raise our children like this, relaying to him this this hope, Ch keep telling them the great deeds of the Lord, how many things the Lord has done for us, for the church, for the uh, work of the Spirit is spread all over the world, to give worth to each moment in our walk in the presence of the Lord. We had this week, uh, we did a visit to one of the homes of the church, when we gave an opportunity for the couple to manifest. After all, after all it was their visit. So we went to a home. We, we're not going to do the service. The service is here. There is a moment of intimacy, and there's a piece of the church inside of the house of a person. The person has to have freedom to have a conversation with who is visiting, and now share blessings and maybe even needs. So the format of a visit are informal, where there is fellowship, there is a pleading of the blood of Jesus, but there is an interaction between the one that is being visited and the one that visits. Most of the time, uh, I, will, I want to say that who visits are always blessed as much as the one that is being visited. Is the abundance of the blessing of the Lord. There has no limit. Today, I'm only going to bless the, the families being visited. The ones that are visiting, I'm not going to bless. Of course, God will never do this. God blesses as much or even more, depending on the faith. So this couple began to describe the deeds of the Lord in their lives with the children present and we began to hear and we kept drinking drinking this experience we absorbed an experience of a family that came uh, early and recently and we found out about that and this edified us greatly and they confessed that in that there was a moment in their lives and they were warm in the presence of the Lord it's a great danger living a spiritual life, a warm life. That's why we want, we don't want this for our children. That's why we feed them with the bread of the the, the Lord, because we don't want them to be warm, but they be heated up by the family of God. So the family mentioned that when this warmth of the spiritual life hit them, and everything was normal. That's what the world tries to do. Tries to make everything look normal. You don't have to worry about anything. Sanctification, forget about it. If somebody's doing it, you can do it as well. Somebody else is doing it, you can do it as well. 
and the children, the intermediary, the adolescents, they have been more and more as being attacked even greater against them because they don't have yet the spiritual foundation completely um, created. Many times they're vulnerable, and there we are, the parents and the church on the background pleading and praying and giving instruction so that they be victorious in the Lord. So the warm spiritual warmth came and there was a dividing of waters. This, this family said that there was a moment in which death surrounded them and this period of death was awakening so that they could realize that life is only in Jesus. There was a, prob a problem, there was a harm at that moment but they realized that that harm was just a consequence of the period that they were a little distance from the Lord and when they realized the Lord embraced them, they confessed their sins and asked, Lord, have mercy. And they shouted, Hosanna. The whole Hosanna means save us, Lord. And they shouted, Hosanna, and the Lord saved us, them. The Lord bring them back to, to, uh, to the uh, the wa calm waters and the green pastures and now they congregate with us they, they have uh, they participate in banquets with us for the honor and glory of the Lord this is one of the experiences that we're going to be sharing throughout this month there are going to be more as beautiful and wonderful as, as this one or even greater who believes says amen I believe and say that about my home Lord give uh, flame that the Lord may be entering into my house. Lord, bless my home. Speak to me when you're operating and fulfilling this visit in my home. This month we're going to see the glory of God even more. By faith I can say that. By faith I proclaim this on the life of the church. This month the visits of the homes are going to be a dividing of waters and our children are going to be like Isaac. They're going to be children that will see things, they will hear things, the message was preached recently in which the, uh, a moment in which the uh, Lord required Abram to sacrifice his son. Uh, the child knew how the service was. Isaac knew. Isaac saw the, the wood, he saw the knife, he, he saw the fire and the ropes, but he didn't see the victim. And he asked his father, Father, I see everything. Everything is prepared. See, my brethren, the children are not foolish. They're not here because we are here, but they pay attention to the services. They are paying attention to what is being preached, what is being sang. How many of them, many times, question us? They ask, they want to know the origin, the beginning of the end of that story, and what that means. And you and I have to be prepared, have to feed off the, of the Bible, so that we may be able to give the right answer. And if we don't have the right answer in us, by knowledge or by knowing, we may ask the Lord revelation because that's what happened to Abraham. When the Abraham and the child went going were going up in the mountain, Abraham answered immediately by the Spirit, "My son, the Lord will provide to Himself the lamb." And Isaac heard that expression, kept going up, and saw the ritual being beginning, and he realized that he was going to be the victim. The uh, other peoples surrounded them. They did that to the foreign gods. Isaac didn't question it. A servant that uh, follows the will of the Lord, he realized that, but he didn't say anything. Uh, and up to the last moment, he obeyed his father. And when God saw in the heart of Abraham, and saw that Abraham was not going to go back, and he saw that his son was not going to murmur, and then he sent his angel to say, don't do the, that. And uh, it w the solution was provided. There was a divine providence. There was a lamb that was uh, stuck on a branch, and they were able to sacrifice, and they, they fulfilled the, the promise that they made. We're going to go, we're going to adore the Lord, and we're coming back. The Lord didn't allow uh, Abram to be ashamed because he did exactly what they promised. God, they gave them the opportunity to live something that is beyond what the eyes can see, like the song we just sang. Isaac grew with this kind of experience. He had a deliverance from death, and that only strengthened his structure and his walk spiritually. And the Bible says that after the death of his father, 
Abraham, he blessed Isaac, his son. And you and I are here tonight. We are hearing the Holy Spirit telling to you and I, because we have chosen to inhabit close to the well of the one that lives and sees, we both have a promise of, of life to our lives. Nothing. We are going to lack anything. There will be provision, there will be victory, there is going to be a direction of the Holy Spirit because the Lord is faithful, because it's living and truth. He, he's alive and He sees, He contemplates each one of our hearts. The Lord is looking to you and I tonight. Close your eyes and allow the Holy Spirit to scan you. Let the Lord search your heart. Let the Lord look to you and to see what is inside of our heart because the Lord promised that tonight He was going to give a blessing to the church and this blessing is going to be fulfilled because He promised, not because we want or because we have something in us. We can say, like the servants in the past, we don't have silver or gold, but whatever we have, we give Him. Get up and walk in the name of Jesus. And this is the word of the Lord for you and I. There is going to be a blessing in our hearts tonight. Until the end of the service, take possession of this experience because you have chosen to live in a place which is called the well of the one who lives and sees. One day Jesus uh, stood uh, uh, near the well of uh, Solomon and said, Who has thirst? Who thirsts comes and drink? That's what Jesus is telling you. The portico of Solomon was the only structure of the temple that still maintained the original characteristics. My brother and sister, uh, beloved visitor, you are learning about uh, the work of the Holy Spirit tonight. We have been living this experience not because of the denomination or because of institutional organization. We have been living this because of what we have been living, seeing the deep experience that He has given us in our families and our homes. And I want to tell you tonight, give worth to this experience. Give worth to this, the kingdom of the Holy Spirit. The work that the Lord is seeing and is alive and is giving solution to our problems that many times you don't even see. You want to see an example of that? There is a dream the Lord has given to a servant. In this dream, a man, a member of this church, he was going to be approached by an authority and that would bring great harm to his life. And the Lord in this dream is showing that He delivered you. He delivered you for the love of His name that you have on, on your forehead. It prevented you from being stopped and being questioned so that you would be here and may give a shout of victory because only the Lord is God. Because if you were not for God, where would I be? What well is this? What a wonderful well this is. This is the well of the one who lives and is sees. He is alive. His power is, is, can be seen among us every day of our lives. The great deliverance of the Lord uh, cannot be numbered in our lives. Maybe you entered here, like the Lord has shown another gift, that there was a man whose life, spiritual life was stagnated, was stopped. And the oil of the Spirit is going to be poured on you. And this is the promise of the Lord. It's not my promise. The water of the Spirit is going to flow in your soul and you will be stored. Believe in it. Take possession of your victory. Your spiritual life that up until now it was stopped, it was stagnated. Now it's going to be dynamic for the only glory of the Lord. Why? Because you have chosen to inhabit close to the well of the one who lives and sees many of the deliverance, many of the victories. We could have spent the whole night here so that we may understand this. The Lord wants to, uh, has to do something in our lives, may turn us upside down, make us go through a situation that may see, uh, this is normal, what is happening to me is not normal. What is going on? What is the Lord allowing to happen? The Lord is turning me inside out. I'm going through a, a trial that I cannot withstand. Lord, what can you do with me, Lord? Don't ask what the Lord wants you to do. Ask the Lord what He is doing already. You take possession of our victory, even in pain, even in sadness, even if you feel like you're upside down, if you feel if displaced, if you uncomfortable spiritually, the Lord is working your life. It is blessing or a lesson for the honor and glory of the Lord. The Lord is preparing for something. 
the Lord is doing something to to polish you, so it may be a diamond in his hand, something precious, a uh, powerful weapon, as like a a blade of uh, two sides. Uh, when the Lord stood on the portico of Solomon, he said, "Who has whose thirst comes to me and drink?" He was saying that there is a project, and it's going to not going to be different than the original. This project is not Church Maranatha. This is the project of God. It's a project of salvation for the life of man. This is the work of the Holy Spirit of God. And this has to remain original in us. It cannot change. It has never changed. It's not going to change. Who changes are us that try to many times to adapt it to our, ourselves. Why well, we cannot do this? Because it is perfect. Imper we are the ones who are imperfect. That's why when we look at man, every time we see to man's flaws, we trip and fall. But when we look only to heaven, if we only look to the Lord, because there is uh, our redemption comes from the ultimate finish of our faith. Uh, when you say uh, Abraham was the father of faith, uh, our faith came from heaven. That's the faith that we can have in our hearts. Whoever thirsts, come to me and drink. Who gives water to quench our thirst, my brother and sister? And look, thirst, according to science, is the worst of the feelings. Hunger we can withstand for many days, but thirst, after a while, it gives a pain that, according to science, is almost unexplainable. But Jesus is the water is the symbol of the Lord Jesus. If you made your inhabitants near to the well of the one who lives and sees, you're never going to see this pain. You're not going to see the pain of sin. You're not going to see the pain of many times to admit through human eyes your lack, but the Lord is supplying to you every day. The water of life is present. The river of living water is flowing through us here. Look to Jesus. Life is only in Jesus. Who gives water when we are thirsty? It's Jesus, only Jesus. He's the one, He's the God present. He's the one who said, He stood up and said, Who is thirsty? Come and drink. That's what Jesus is saying. So that you may have an your hymn bed. A habitation link next to the well of of uh, the one who see, has a life and sees. Who gives water when I'm thirsty? Life is only in Jesus. Close your eyes and don't leave this place without possession of your victory, your blessing. Say, ask the Lord, Lord, rewrite my history tonight. I'm going through difficult moments. My spiritual life is stagnated. I wanted to begin to move, Lord. I want to see the dynamism of this work. Uh, apply your, the oil of the Holy Spirit in me. Make me remember the, your, my first love when we uh, learn about you. Pour this water upon me. Refresh my soul tonight. My brother and sister, nothing in this world will satisfy this thirst that we feel in, our, in ourselves. This thirst is the Holy Spirit that places in us so that we may want to live next to the well of the one who lives and sees. Glory to God.
I'd like to invite the church to stand up. Praise the one of the world who is alive and sees. The church glorifying. Say to the Lord, Lord, transform me. Imperfect me, Lord. I need you. I need your anointing. I need your grace. In this moment that I'm going through in trials and tribulation, be with me, Lord. Put water on my roots so that may be a, a tree that gives fruit in your presence. Glorify the Lord because everything that you are, everything that you have, Everything that you can do comes from the Lord. It's a blessing of the Lord in your life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. He is the Jesus. We, we praise this Lord tonight. He's the one. Today we're experiencing this rest that is called the Lord Jesus. Our lips and glorify the Lord. We are here to celebrate the life that is in Jesus. Say glory and hallelujah to the name of the Lord. Give to the Lord your gratitude because His presence is ready to help you. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Another word of glorification of the Lord. We want to praise you. Because you are the one who has sustained us. He's the one who has embraced our soul. He's the one who has quenched our thirst. A thirst for the living God. We adore and praise you for, because tonight we can contemplate the presence of the angels here in this place. We praise the Lord because every day you have given us, you have prepared us for an eternity. A land that you have prepared for your chosen. We praise you and adore you, Lord for everything in the name of Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Allow the Spirit to visit you and bring joy to your heart. Renew you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Holy, holy is the name of, uh, of the King of Kings. Blessed is the name of the Lord that can do all things for us. You are the the captain of the celestial armies, Lord, that has done wonders in our among us for the blessings in our families, for the personal blessings, for the blessings of the church, 
for the victories that you, victories that you have given to this ministry, how many trials and tribulations, but how many victories you have given us, Lord. Hallelujah and glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Holy is your name. Receive, God, our service and our, our adoration. Give, take us home in peace for a night of rest and peace and tranquility and security so that tomorrow we may enter, come back to your temple to praise your name. We praise you, therefore, in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. Whatever is the moment of this service that you felt that the Lord spoke to you personally, don't be timid. Don't be uh, uncomfortable. Raise your hand. As the group sings softly, we're going to have our assistant tonight. Assistance tonight. We're going to. We want to go towards you and the, uh, wish the peace of the Lord to you. Pick up your hand and say how much we love you in the name of Jesus. We want to pray to you so that your blessing may be sealed from heaven. That you may leave this place victorious.